All right, today we are doing my five month postpartum update. I know that it is late. I know that this should have been done like two weeks ago, but with everything that's been going on lately, we are now at my parents' house. So things have been a little crazy. I apologize that it's delayed, but I've got quite a few things to chat with you guys about. And I do wanna say that this video is definitely not the video to watch with your little ones. Like I know that sometimes you guys watch my vlogs and stuff with your kids around. You guys asked some pretty uh, spicy questions <laughs> over on Instagram, a lot having to do with um, just adult time <laughs> with my husband and stuff. So I'll be answering some of those questions, talking about my mental health and stuff. So I just wanted to give you like a little disclaimer that this is not the video to put on like when your little ones are around but we're gonna jump into it so i think the last update that i did was a pretty depressing one honestly in my four month postpartum update which i will link down below in case you guys want to catch up i was not in a good place at all it was probably the hardest like postpartum update to film because i was really struggling like mentally i was just a hot mess like things were really rough i was very anxious i was very just overwhelmed i was just not having a good time i am happy to report that right now i feel like i'm doing a lot better i still have good days and bad days there are definitely days when i'm like you know things are good and we're in a routine and jackson is cooperating and riley is cooperating because if you guys are new here by the way i do have my five month old but i also have a two and a half year old toddler so juggling both of them has been definitely difficult but i do feel like there are some days when i've got it things are good there are still other days that are hard like last night jackson barely slept and so i was up since like two in the morning i feel like not very rested at all so the days that i get less sleep are definitely harder but there are some other days that are just better and i have a better overall attitude again we're in the middle of a freaking pandemic so there are other factors that play into like how i feel and how you guys feel i'm sure but as a whole like big picture i will say that things have gotten better obviously right now we're at my parents house so i have a lot more help and that is definitely boosting my mood so much like i am so happy to be here and so i know that that plays a big role in how i'm feeling but even before we got here i do think that i was kind of doing a little bit better and i'm going to talk a little bit about why i think that the single biggest thing that has helped me to start feeling better just mentally and feeling more like myself and not as angry and frustrated and just overwhelmed in general is the fact that we have made huge strides with jackson's sleeping it's not perfect we still have a lot of work to do but the biggest thing for me has been that I no longer have to rock him to sleep so ever since we started doing some of that sleep training and we started letting him cry a little bit in the bassinet I do not have to spend like 30 minutes rocking him to sleep which for me was just like mentally taxing there would be some days where I would spend 20-30 minutes rocking him I would place him in the bassinet and then he'd be up again and that would literally just kill my whole mood kill my whole day and you could see it like as soon as I would go downstairs after like a hard put down like Joe would notice that I was in a bad mood that I was cranky that I was very quick to snap at him and things like that so I do think that the fact that I can now just lay him down in his bassinet tell him I love him say okay we're gonna take a nap now and leave just the fact that I no longer have to do that extra step just I don't know I just feel so much happier about that and if you guys want to see like how we worked on that and his whole sleeping I'll leave that like sleep training video down in the description box too I'll say it again but I keep saying this in all of these updates for me going from one child to two children has been harder than going from zero kids to just Riley it was definitely a hard transition for me and I know for sure that I have been suffering with some postpartum anxiety with postpartum I, I don't know if it's depression or if it's rage honestly because there is postpartum rage the past few months i was like really angry sometimes and i know that that's like really crappy to say but i definitely suffered some periods where i was just angry like i was just pissed off and i definitely talked about like how that was affecting like my marriage like if you guys didn't ever see the video that was like a chatty get ready with me i talked a little bit about my marriage and about joe and like our dynamic since having jackson and my husband is amazing i love him he's still in my life he's gonna continue to be in my life it's not like we're separating or anything like i read a comment the other day like oh i thought you guys were separating like we're not separating like he 
is attached to me, I am attached to him, we are good. But this has definitely like taken a toll on us and I'd be lying to you if I said, oh, it was just like normal. When we first had Riley, we had to kind of adjust to now being parents and that whole dynamic. And I remember like there were a lot of fights and there were a lot of just arguments and figuring things out. And it was definitely true this time around also. I do wanna just share like a little tip that I found helpful because up until like last month, Joe and I also were having some communication issues. I was still like snapping at him and I was just just kind of pissed at him sometimes because I was also dealing with some of that postpartum resentment where I kind of resented the fact that he had a little bit more free time than I did and all of that. And the other day it kind of came to a head where like my mom had to kind of like sit us both down over the phone. We did like a virtual like phone therapy session with my mom. Kind of talked to her about like some of the issues that we were having. And one of the biggest things that came out of that um, conversation was the fact that like Joe is a very helpful guy and Joe will always like try to help me out around the house he'll wash dishes he will cook dinner for us like he is a very helpful guy like if he wasn't if he just didn't help me at all like I wouldn't be with him because I need someone who's going to help me. The problem was that for a long time like since Jackson's been born one of the big issues that I have been having is that sometimes I need time away from Jackson. I need time away from the kids. And so even though Joe was helping me around the house and Joe would help me by washing dishes and stuff, sometimes what I really needed was for maybe me to do the dishes and him be with the kids. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. If you guys are like, what the heck, she wants to wash dishes. The point is that like he thought he was helping me and what I really needed was a different kind of help. After a long day of being with the kids mentally, what I need is just some time where I don't have to attend to another human. That's literally all I needed. So I had to kind of work to communicate with Joe about that. So like when he's asking me and he does a great job of asking me like, hey, can, how can I help you? Do you need some help? Instead of just saying, yes, help me out, you know, just do something like I need to be a little bit more clear about what I need. And so now I'll tell him, yes, can you please just take both of them? Or sometimes I'll even tell him just take Jackson so I can have some time with Riley. So that's one of the things that we've been working on this month that I think has made a huge difference in my overall mood and our overall dynamic like that probably deserves its whole separate video but communication issues are very common and especially like when you're dealing with two kids and just kids in general stress level is high anxiety is high like there's a lot going on but if you guys are struggling with your partners i highly encourage that you kind of just sit down and talk about what you both need that's been like really helpful for us. I seriously don't know how long this video is going to be because I have so many things that I've been wanting to just talk about like having to do with me and how I'm feeling. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about is the fact that this month we had Jackson's accident and I'm not going to talk too much about it because I don't want to go there and you guys probably know or if you don't know you can go see those videos where I talk about what happened but I do think obviously that I have some like PTSD from the accident like any time that I hear any loud noise in my house and I don't have like my eyeballs on my kids like if I go to take a shower and Joe's watching the kids and for any reason I hear anything loud I I start to freak out my heart starts racing I'm like oh my god like something fell on Jackson again it's been a little bit rough dealing with that but Overall, I'm just like so obviously thankful and just I feel so blessed that he's okay. And that's kind of played into my mood also, I think, like overall my mental health. That accident really helped put things into perspective for me and I know that it's terrible that something that bad would need to happen to like, you know, make me think this way, but it really did just make me realize that even though I've been struggling with his sleeping and with his napping and the short naps and the waking up a million times and being very sleep deprived, like I would gladly have that. I would gladly take that on if it means that I get to have this beautiful boy. Like I don't take that for granted. Like I really almost lost him. Like I really thought for a few minutes there that I had lost my son. And so like having gone through that, it kind of makes me like i don't know a little bit more patient with him it makes me a little bit more patient with the whole situation it's still hard i'm never gonna say oh like this is just a breeze like just we'll figure it out like it's hard and mentally it is taxing and hard i feel like that's the reality of motherhood and having two kids like it is 
not a walk in the park but it's definitely a blessing still and i've always said that like it's a blessing i love my children so i just wanted to make it a point to just say like that the accident did somehow affect my overall like postpartum mental state let's get into some of like the physical aspects of like what i've been going through so first of all no i have not gotten my period back yet because a lot of you guys asked that was one of the like most commonly asked questions that you guys wanted to know i haven't gotten my period back i think i told you guys that when i first started taking my birth control which i'm taking the slim birth control i did bleed like i don't know like two three four days into it like i bled but not for a long time just for like a little bit and I called the doctor and the nurse there told me that it's something called like breakthrough bleeding that it wasn't really my cycle coming back but that eventually my cycle should come back I'm five months postpartum and it still hasn't come back but I am still nursing Jackson so I think that that probably plays a role into that with Riley I don't think I got my period back until I really stopped breastfeeding her and there was a long time there that I would breastfeed her just twice a day like in the morning and at night and even when I was just doing morning and nighttime feeds I still didn't have my period back so it wasn't until like I finished finished which was like about a year after she was born that I think I got it back so maybe that'll be the same this time around I'm not really stressing it at the moment like I'm just taking my birth control if maybe in a couple more months I'm not back with my cycle then maybe I will call the doctor again but right now i'm not freaking out because that's pretty normal based on like last time so the other thing that i got asked about a ton like number one thing was about sex and about intimacy with my husband and whether or not it's painful and whether or not we're too tired for that to even happen like you guys had a lot of questions about sex and i think that's fine like that's a normal part of life obviously we have our babies because we had sex like one thing leads to another first of all when did we start having sex again so normally you have to get cleared to um, go back to being intimate like by your doctors the doctors normally tell you don't have sex for six weeks and um, don't like work out and all of that so at six weeks I got the clear and you know we tried it out and it was okay I will say that it was a little bit painful um, with Riley it was more painful so with Riley I remember that I didn't feel like normal doing that until maybe nine months postpartum and that's just straight up like it was painful um, I think maybe there was some mental and physical like part of that I had an episiotomy with Riley so I know that there was a lot more happening down there and the recovery for me was also worse with Riley I think that's why it took me so long to kind of feel normal again in that arena because there was just a lot happening down there and I also think that I was scared that it was gonna hurt so there was also this aspect of like like I didn't really want to all the time because i was scared that it was gonna hurt because in my mind all i thought about was the fact that they freaking cut up my vagina and then sewed it back together and like obviously that would have to hurt if stuff goes near there this time around it hasn't been as scary because overall my whole recovery process has been better but i still have to like take it easy like after you give birth like i don't care if it's the first time you give birth or the sixth time that you give birth like now like right after you give birth is probably not the time to just like be hanging from the ceiling and doing crazy things like take it take it easy and that's okay like you just like had a baby and whether or not like you had a c-section or a vaginal delivery like i had a vaginal delivery for both of my kids like even with the c-section you have like recovery that has to happen like that's a huge surgery so just be you know patient your partners too have to be patient you gave them a freaking human like they need to be patient with you so that's just my advice you know take it slow take it easy go at your own pace um i know that my doctor like the very first thing that she told me when she gave me the clear was you're gonna want to use a lot of lube so you know you can take that advice too to make things a little easier but eventually i think sex can get back to normal but you just need to like again just go slow go at your own pace figure out what you know doesn't feel as uncomfortable but if it does feel uncomfortable don't feel bad like you're not the only one you have gone through a lot i would say that like if six months go by and you're still having a lot of pain or you know you're just uncomfortable reach out to your doctor and let them know like it's not an uncommon thing i promise you and i'm sure that they will have some recommendations just to make sure that it's nothing else so that's just my two cents on that the other question that i got asked a lot 
was are you guys like intimate or are you too tired a lot of people were telling me that they're exhausted and that their husbands or significant others are suffering from this that they're not in the mood that you know it's just not like it used to be and to that i will say just a few things first of all if you're freaking exhausted like you're allowed to be exhausted because you have children that you're dealing with and i promise you i'm pretty sure i have a video that i will link down below that is also very old and the quality is terrible but i talk a little bit more about sex and intimacy and just marriage after kids and i will be the first one to admit that my mood and the frequency that i want sex has definitely gone down the tube since i had kids because freaking tired i'm tired i've spent the entire day like either feeding a baby or listening to the other one scream like trying to prevent meltdowns like at the end of the day all i want is to take a shower have a glass of wine watch some netflix like by myself like i don't want to necessarily always have that kind of time and like before we had kids i was the opposite before we had kids i was always the one like you know i wanted to be romanced and i wanted to have that time and when i became a mom i just it's not as important anymore that's not to say that my husband is neglected or for you guys to feel bad for him like he is plenty happy and i make sure that he feels loved and respected and needed and all of that it's just not like the focal point anymore i don't know like we're just at a point right now where like if we get some alone time sometimes it's nice to just like be able to talk to each other without screaming or just watch a show together and i don't think that there's anything wrong with that as long as both people i guess are happy about that you know again i feel like this is the kind of topic that needs like its whole other video but in a nutshell like i think it's normal if you're tired if you don't necessarily want that all the time i talked about also in one of my more recent videos like about being touched out like the concept that like you have babies on you all day long and you know especially like if you're nursing like you have someone freaking like sucking on your boob all day long the last thing you want is anybody else touching your boobs like sometimes you just want your space and you just i don't know you just feel like you need to be by yourself and that's that's a normal thing so let's move on to a couple other things that i wanted to mention so first of all headaches um i've been getting a bunch of headaches lately i'm pretty sure that might be hormonal but i've gotten a lot more headaches lately so that's something that i'm keeping an eye on i have to take like tylenol or motrin every once in a while when i feel headache coming on because if not i will get a migraine and those are like the worst so it's just something that i've been noticing maybe it's like my hormones you know getting back into some kind of flow and maybe that means that i'm gonna get my period soon i don't know but i am having headaches so the postpartum hair loss like i am legit losing all of my hair like yesterday i saw it in the viewfinder i was like taking photos and stuff and i realized that like my hairline is like all the way back here like all look at that like all of that is hair that is gone so i've been trying to do what i can to help it like i've been taking the collagen peptides which is supposed to help with your skin with your nails with your hair and i mean i want to say that it's a little bit better than it used to be but i'm still like getting chunks of hair in my hair ties like every time that i take off my hair tie tons of hair comes out when i brush my hair after i take a shower tons of hair comes out so i i don't know what else i can do if you guys have any recommendations let me know but right now all i'm doing is taking the collagen peptides and seeing if that helps i will say though that my skin feels awesome so ever since i started taking the collagen peptides my skin like right now i'm not wearing a single thing on my skin like not even foundation cc cream nothing like i am bare faced right now i put on like my eyebrows and i put on a little bit of mascara but no makeup whatsoever and my skin feels very clear and it does feel a little bit more like you know like there's a little bit more life to my skin so i'm happy with how my skin looks these days but i don't know hopefully the collagen peptides can also help my hair i got a lot of questions about whether or not i'm exercising and the whole thing about weight and your like baby weight and getting back into shape after having a baby all of that first and foremost do i exercise i don't exercise first of all every day literally the only exercise that i do is i do some crunches every once in a while like whenever i can put jackson down on his play mat sometimes i'll just take five ten minutes and just lay down next to him and instead of 
like just watching TV or instead of, I don't know, just being on my phone, I take that time to kind of multitask and I'll do some crunches and I will do different variations of crunches to just like work on my core. And then sometimes I will get some dumbbells and I have like five and 10 pound dumbbells. I'm pretty sure that that's the weight on them. And I just do like, I don't know, like I, mean, I don't even know what I'm doing. Like I just kind of lift them up and I just kind of work on whatever muscle this is over here. So those are the two workouts that I do. I'm just not a workout person. Like I just don't like it. I really do not enjoy working out. I know that I need to be better about it, like to get my body moving and stuff. Cause when your body is moving, like I do think you feel better, but I wish that I liked to do cardio and run or like go on walks, but I don't. <laughs> I wish that I had more advice to give on that subject, but I do recommend that like, if you're trying to, I don't know, if you're trying to lose some weight or you're trying to work on getting your body moving, just go for a walk. Put your baby in the stroller and go out for a walk. Like they love it. Fresh air and sunshine is good for you. So even if that's all you do, even if it's five or 10 minutes, just literally up and down the block, because believe me, I'm the first one to have anxiety about going for a walk by myself. I think that I'm gonna get abducted every single time. So don't go even far, just maybe up and down your block, go in a circle, but at least get outside, get moving. You know, I think that that can really help. And then as far as like, how do you find the time? Like you just do it while other stuff is happening. Like I said, if I have Jackson in his play mat, I will use that time to do some crunches. If I'm waiting for the like laundry to finish drying and I'm there and I have maybe two minutes left for the dryer, I'll just do some squats really quick while I wait. Just things like that. Like even in the shower, like sometimes when I'm taking a shower, I will do like calf raises, just stuff that takes literally two seconds to do. So right now, that's really the only time that I'm getting a workout in. But at the moment, it's not like a huge priority of mine. I think for me, as far as losing the baby weight, it was more having to do with like eating better and just eating smaller portions, eating a little cleaner. I have not at all like cut everything out of my diet because I still have M&Ms, I still have sweets. Right now I am in freaking Miami and I'm having pastelitos and pan con vite. I'm literally stuffing my face with all of my favorite foods, but when I can make like a healthier choice, I try to do that. So, you know, it's just about balance. One of the things that I started to do is like, I used to like after dinner, I would always like follow up dinner with like a snack. Like I'd go on the couch and I'd have a bunch of snacks or like I'd get a bag of candy and I would go to the couch and whenever Joe and I would watch something on TV, like that's what I would do. I would be eating after dinner. And I made it a point for like a good two, three weeks to just say, okay, after dinner, I'm not having anything else. And I think that really did help me like to cut my sugar and to just not have as much like calories, especially like just empty calories. I did get a bunch of questions about like whether I was still nursing, which I told you guys, I am still nursing and about whether or not I was able to like switch well, because there was a point where I was pumping. If you guys have been following along, you guys know that there was a time where we were giving Jackson formula and a couple of you guys asked like how we got him back on the breast. For me, it was very easy. I'm very lucky that it was very easy because my milk supply, I think for the most part remained because of the fact that I was pumping all that time. Like when I was giving Jackson formula, I was still pumping with my LV and I was trying to maintain my milk supply. And then when we decided to go back on the breast, I just stopped the formula and just put him back on the breast. And I think he liked to nurse. I think it was very comforting for him. So he actually preferred that. So for us, it wasn't an issue, but I had the same issue with Riley like two years ago because when Riley was first born, she was taking a bottle and she was in the NICU. So they were giving her a bottle. So when we brought her home, we were trying to establish breastfeeding and we were trying to get her from the bottle to the breast. And that was a little bit more challenging. And one of the things that the doctors at that point, like my lactation consultant and all of that, one of the things that they recommended was that we do a lot of skin to skin that I just literally take off like all of her clothes and just like have her on me just bare skin to use that to like see if that would help her just be more excited about nursing and you know the skin to skin connection and all of that so that might be something that you want to try like trying to get them back on the breast maybe just spend you know a couple hours a day just like having them on your chest have them in your bed with you have them on the couch with you and just like spend a little bit of time trying to reestablish that I don't know Maybe that'll help. A lot of you guys also asked, which I think is very sweet, um, like whether or not I'm getting any alone time now. Um, right now that I'm with my parents, absolutely, I'm getting some alone time. I have been 
just really blessed and now like the kids have their grandparents and so there have been a couple days like this morning since i slept like crap i gave jackson to my mom this morning i said okay i'm gonna go back to bed for like another hour and i got just another hour to myself i've been able to hand off the kids and just say you know what i need a nap today or i just need to go take a shower and it's gonna be a long shower and that's just been really nice so i'm really glad that we've had this time and that even with this crappy pandemic situation like something beautiful came out of it the fact that i was able to come home to my parents and have that you know help that i didn't have in virginia so i'm very thankful for that but i do want to say that before we came back to miami like even when we were still in virginia i had talked to joe and he was doing a great job of just like letting me have a little bit of time to myself and letting me use that time however i wanted like there were some times when i would tell him at the beginning of the day like listen i'm gonna have to sit down and film for about an hour today can you make that happen at some point and we kind of talk about the schedule and what's gonna work and what's the best time for me to do that and so sometimes i would take the time to film other times i would take that time to just like go take a bath and again just knowing that it's gonna be a long bath that it's gonna be a little while before i'm back and just like letting him know that you know i needed just a little bit of time to decompress for myself he'd been doing a really good job at that lately so i think again it just goes back to like communication and just being able to say hey this is what i need i'm almost done but this camera freaking keeps falling off of the window so good to have you guys up on the windowsill so that's great now this is gonna be like freaking crooked but this is how we're gonna finish the video okay, so i got a question about anxiety um this person said does the anxiety ever ease I'm anxious all the time i am a very anxious person so i from my experience the anxiety doesn't ever like just straight up go away it's not like i ever live my life like i'm freaking frolicking through the fields and don't have any worries at all like just life is wonderful like life is wonderful but I always have some kind of anxiety and it's very hard for me to just like relax and not have any anxiety what i have learned is how to kind of manage it and kind of i don't know still live my life through it if that makes any sense i'm still very anxious about like my kids and their health and keeping them safe especially after jackson's accident i'm also anxious like i can't just take a nap while jackson's napping because i know that he's going to be up in like 30 minutes so i find it very hard to just kind of relax and just be present sometimes and just enjoy the moment i'm always like five steps ahead of myself and my brain and like thinking okay what do i have to do after he wakes up from his nap even though he just went down for his nap i don't know if that makes any sense to you guys i probably sound insane but does it ever ease I mean you're a mom i would say no <laughs> just on my own experience the anxiety is still there but i think it becomes a little bit more manageable especially when you have support and you talk about your feelings and you have other people that kind of help you out with that um but i'm not an expert on any of this so that's just what i've been through and the last thing that i'm going to answer like i got a bunch of questions so maybe i'll do a separate q a to answer some of the rest of the ones but i got a lot of questions about hormones and like my marriage with joe and how all of that is am i as snappy to joe as i used to be and i just want to close up this video by saying that we are in a much better place so i do feel like i've been working on being less snappy and again my overall mood has helped that happen because i feel like i am just in a better place so i've really been just focusing on my just relationship with joe we've been making it like a point to make sure that like we're in a good place and realizing that it's not like me against him and it's not like he's against me like we're a team and i think for a long time what i was struggling with was like we were kind of like in this competition honestly of like whose job was harder you know like i was kind of like i'm here with two kids at home like my job is freaking hard and then on the other hand he was like well i'm also working providing for you guys i also help with the house i cook dinner i you know clean up and all of that so my job is hard too and so we kind of were going back and forth always like who had it worse or who had it harder or like we were literally in a pissing competition of like whose job was harder and we had to really sit back and realize like it's not a competition about whose job is harder like we both have a difficult job we both have different roles that we play in our family dynamic and we both help in different ways and so once we kind of like had those conversations and realized that i feel like it made 
our entire like family dynamic better because you really have to be a team if you want to have a successful marriage otherwise like if you're constantly just going back and forth and it's easy to do because when you're sleep deprived remember like you can be very angry and passive aggressive and like sleep deprivation is bad so that's what we've been working on lately and it's been really good it's been really good for us this trip here to miami has been really good for us so we are definitely very happy these days and hopefully that'll continue my weight by the way is 120 pounds i will show you guys my um, stomach right now i did get some questions about stretch marks and whether or not they've been fading i think that the stretch marks have faded and i do think that in general stretch marks fade a bit but i still have like some stretchy skin even though i'm 120 pounds even though i feel physically like almost like in the best shape that i've been in a very long time i still have some stretchy skin but let me just show you what that looks like so i'm wearing these high-waisted um leggings which are not really going to help so I have like all these extra lines like I always do in these freaking videos. You know, that's the line from the leggings. I still have a little bit of a line down here and a little bit of the stretch marks that I used to have. But that's what my stomach looks like. I'm very content with the progress that I've made in terms of like just my weight and stuff. I'm very confident about my body these days. So I'm a happy camper about that. But I do still have some stretchy skin. See that? Like my skin is not what it used to be, but like I tell you always, like you pushed out a child and that's that's okay. So still some stretchy skin there, you can see it. My belly button is like all sorts of weird these days. So yes, my body has changed and I am embracing it and loving it. And I think that that's just kind of what you have to do. <laughs> like you just have to embrace the body that you have now once you have a baby. So that's it. I know that this update was very chatty. It was probably all over the place. If there's anything that I missed, let me know. Leave any of your questions down below. You guys can also follow me on Instagram because I always ask you guys to ask me questions over there. And then I try to include those in my videos. But I want to say that this is the best that I have felt in a really long time. Is there still room for improvement? Absolutely. Would I like to sleep more? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, do I hope that eventually Jackson is sleeping through the night more and giving me more rest? Yes, but I'm feeling a lot better than I did last month. I'm feeling just more like myself and that makes me really happy. So thank you guys for all of the support and all of just the check-ins to see how I'm doing. All of the love that you guys like gave us after Jackson's accident and all of that. Like it means the world to me. So thank you for that. And that's it. So thank you again for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you got something from it, subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.